Hi, I'm Dempsey Pulat, and this week I'm reviewing... Now before we start off, as always, I just want to take a quick second to remind you guys to make sure you hit that like button if you like today's video, and if you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well for more new movie-related content weekly. But without further ado, let's jump into today's film. The Empires vs. the Bronx was directed by Oz Rodriguez and stars Jaden Michael, Gerald W. Jones III, and Gregory Diaz IV. The film revolves around a trio of misfits who band together after they discover that a group of vampires is secretly trying to take over their neighborhood in the Bronx. Now, I was actually pleasantly surprised by this film, but I must admit that when I first saw the trailer and I read the synopsis, I did get some Attack the Block vibes from it, and for those of you guys who don't know what Attack the Block is, it's this really great sci-fi film that came out about a decade ago, and it revolves around these teenagers who have to protect their apartment complex from these alien inv invaders. Uh, it stars John Boyega, who's probably now best known for Star Wars, uh, but it's very well done. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend you check it out. And the two do obviously share some similar plot elements. However, I have to say that this film is much more sincere and even has a deeper meaning behind it. You see, the vampires are real, but they represent gentrification. Quite literally, they're trying to gentrify the entire Bronx because, as they put it, no one cares about it or everyone who lives there is forgotten. And having been born and raised in the Bronx myself, I can tell you firsthand, they're not necessarily wrong. Of all the boroughs, the Bronx is the one that's most disregarded because of its association with crime and poverty. Plus, I mean, when you think of New York, it's not the first thing that comes to mind, right? I think the film had a really great message about how important it is to stand and fight to preserve your culture in the face of all these forces that are constantly moving in to try and change or even erase it. With all that being said though, by no means is this an awards kind of film. I can tell you flat out, this was not made for Oscar voters. <laughs> uh, and it's not even that scary either, I figure I might as well throw that out because it does have the word vampires in the title. It does have a lot of horror elements in it. but. It's really more of a comedy, and a fun and earnest one, too. It's got a lot of really great jokes and gags that are geared towards the New York culture littered throughout. And um, I think, not to say that if you're not a New Yorker, you won't enjoy them, but I think that New Yorkers will get the biggest enjoyment out of them, if that makes sense, including this fantastic Sammy Sosa reference. The kid Mero, who plays the owner of the local bodega, especially steals the show. In fact, while I did like the three main leads, the film's biggest strength is undeniably its supporting cast. Aside from Mero, the film features Method Man, Zoe Saldana, Sarah Gaydon, and even the underrated character actor Shea Wiggum, who never in all my life did I think I would see utter the words, that's what's up. It's worth the price of admission alone. As much fun as this film is though, it's not perfect. For starters, its pacing at the beginning is very odd. Within the first 10 minutes, our main characters already know about the vampires and they're already plotting against them. That progression feels way too unnatural. Towards the end, too. Not only is the climax a bit brief, but it also escalates in a way that I don't think anybody would expect. And while absolutely hilarious, it just doesn't make sense. Now, there's also a subplot involving a, a local gang that feels a bit shoehorned in, but my biggest problem with the film by far is the fact that the vampires are barely in it. Not to say that we don't see them, but the idea of them seems to be more of a threat to our main characters than anything else. It isn't until the end that we're shown any real action involving them, and even then, it's not that much. Overall, it's a lighthearted little film with, as I mentioned before, a neat little message attached. And while it may be campier than most might expect, it's just plain old fun. Now, there probably will be some people who watch it and absolutely hate it, but I feel like anybody who bothers to sink their teeth into this film will, at the very least, leave satisfied. And for that, I'm going to give this film three stars. We got vampires in the Bronx. Guys, Vampires vs. the Bronx is available on Netflix right now if you want to check it out. And if you do, please make sure to let me know what you thought about it down below in the comment section. Let me know if you loved it, if you hated it. I look forward to reading and responding to all of your comments. 
Now, I want to thank you guys for taking the time out of your day to view this video. It really does mean the world to me. And once again, if you like this video, please make sure to hit that like button. And if you're new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button as well for more new movie-related content weekly. But that's pretty much all the time that I have for you guys today. Uh, so I want to let you guys know that I have a lot of new stuff on the way. So please be on the lookout for more new content shortly. And um, you know what? I should, I should just probably get back to work. Until next time, I'm Dempsey Pallot. Take care.